this is Paradise After Dark. Paradise After Dark is a Palmhawk Media production covering true crime, unsolved mysteries, missing people, urban legends, and strange places. But tonight, we're doing something a little different. We are having a special bonus episode again with Damsel Ninja Nancy. If you'll remember, a little over a year ago, I talked to Nancy. We talked about safety. And tonight, we are going to be talking about abduction prevention because the month of May is Abduction Prevention Awareness Month. So let's welcome Nancy to the show. Hi, Nancy. Hi, everyone. I'm so <laughs> happy to be here again. Thank you, Warren. Of I course. I love chatting with Nancy. She is so knowledgeable about all things safety, especially women's safety. And her products, which we'll get into later, are amazing. I carry them. My daughter carries them. It's I'm just really excited about this conversation because I feel like I'm going to learn a lot and our listeners are going to learn a lot. Well, I hope so. I, I really do. I want to bring knowledge. And I feel like the more knowledge you have, the the safer you are, because the more the most important thing that you can carry with you when you're out and about or even at home is your brain. So feeding your brain, eating correctly, getting a, a amount of sleep you need, the vitamins, the supplements, the water. That's really the most important part of your safety plan, uh, because your brain is your most important safety product. So, yeah, I really think that. And that's we discount that a lot. You know, people forget that they have the most important part is being able to look around, seeing the situations that are happening, looking people in the eye, looking like they're not a victim, not being on their phone. <laughs> I can't tell you the other day I was in Walmart and this girl ran right into me because she was on her phone. Oh, my gosh. So, um, I was probably not the one to run into because then I gave her a little lecture about safety. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I can just picture you in the middle of Walmart. Excuse me, ma'am. Let me talk to you for a second. <laughs> I was like, you would not have run into me if you knew. You know, it was like, she was just like, uh, I think she was kind of shell shocked. But, you know, I think that we need to make sure that people are understanding. You feel complacent sometimes we get because we've been to Walmart a thousand times or we've been to the grocery store a thousand times. But so has everybody else. Just because you've been there and it's comfortable place for you, that's when you let your guard down. Yeah. And I'm not saying you have to be out there and be paranoid because I don't live a paranoid life. I just live a protected life. Right. My life is worth the fight. And so is everyone who's hearing this. You're loved by someone and someone depends on you to get back home or to protect your home while you're there. So uh, everyone's important. Yep. You have a mission while you're here. I agree. So that's my soapbox. Okay. <laughs> so Nancy, tell me a little bit more about Abduction Prevention Awareness Month. And I'm a little embarrassed to admit, I feel like I should have known this, but I didn't, that the month of May is Abduction Prevention Awareness Month. Has that been a thing for very long? Or I know that some <laughs> these trends this month, this, that month, it's... National Moscato Day, you know. <laughs> tell me about Mother Goose Day. Tell so, me about uh, Abduction Prevention Awareness Month. And I, you know, I don't know because I'll be honest, I had not heard of it until this year. So it could be something that we are here at Damsel have decided that it's going to be, but I don't think so because I heard some other people talking about it. But I think it's because May is the month that graduations happen. People start to go on vacations. Uh, summer is happening. So a lot of kids are home that are of age and can stay at home alone or home alone. They're out with their friends more. The days are getting longer. So mm -hmm. we tend to be out and about more. So I believe that's why May is Abduction Prevention Month because of it goes into those months that we really see a spike sometimes. That makes good sense. Yeah, I, I think that's just, I think it's just something that has just happened, you know, within the last probably five or six years, because we've just now started talking about abductions. Right. 
You know, before I think we wanted to hide, but with the Me Too movement that's come out, a lot of these other crimes that that people suffer from are starting to get some notice notice, and now we're getting some safety information about them and some numbers around them to help people have knowledge that they need. Yeah. And something I think that both both your state and my state, which we talked about a little bit off mic, big, big, big problems with human trafficking. Yes. You're, you're in Texas, you're number two in the country and Florida is number three. So that's something, especially, you know, our Texas and Florida listeners and, and everyone really needs to be knowledgeable about and know how to keep themselves safe. So one of the things with human trafficking, I'd, I'd like to just share with you, because I went to a event and there was a policeman there and he was talking about how these people are getting trafficked. And what happens is, especially with our young teenage girls, they're looking for, we've been talking a lot about social media is how they've been looking for likes and people to like their stuff and they want to become influencers and how that's changing the environment around our young people. So he was telling the story that just scared me to death. So what happens is the girls go on to a format on social media and they start to get likes and they start to get followers and they don't always know these followers personally, but yet they become friends in quotes on social media and months go by. And this person is talking to them and they're saying, Hey, how are you? They're sharing private things about themselves. Uh, their person they're talking to is share things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's say the young teenager says, Oh, I'm so excited. My dad's going to take me to the basketball game tonight. And the guy on the other end says, Oh, I'm going too. Hey, why don't we meet since we've never met in person? So then they meet outside bathroom three or whatever it is. And they're standing there and they're talking. And then he says something like, oh, I just got a new car. Do you want to see it? A lot of our our people are not realizing that once they leave, a lot of the gyms and the stadiums, they can't get back in. Yeah. So now they're taking them out to their car to quote, unquote, show them their new car. And that's how they're getting taken. That's an abduction. So what we need to really make sure that our young girls know, our young girls and boys, because it is happening boys also, that just because you know somebody online does not mean that you know someone. And you really don't know who that is behind that person. I can take any picture and put it up, but that doesn't mean that I'm a 15-year-old girl. Right. You know, so we have to really, as parents, be responsible and really be be checking on their social media. I know it makes our kids so angry, but you know, I'll I'll tell you one thing. I never had any privacy when I was growing up. My dad said I could have privacy when I could pay for my own apartment and didn't live <laughs> under his roof. Well, look at you now. I know. I know. So uh, now I wish I lived under his roof and he paid for everything again. You know, <laughs> adulting is not always what it's cracked up to be. Right. That's the truth. <laughs> but um, in, they call it in, in law enforcement, they call it trafficking yourself because you don't even realize that you're doing it. Right. You know, you're looking for the likes, you're looking for the social acceptance. And so we really need to, to learn how to, I think, deal with the social medias in a better in a better way especially as parents yeah you know, so that just scares doesn't that just scare you to death it is it, it scares me I totally agree because I know young girls who are on social media and I I'm friends I mean I have I have friends with kids and I'm friends with the kids and I see the posts and you're right about the likes and I think that a lot of times these young people will go to different extremes to get the likes, whereas they may, they may pose a little provocatively, a little inappropriately. Maybe their outfit is not something their parents would actually let them leave the house in, but, and that mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's just 
a magnet for bad people. But what can parents do aside from removing a bedroom door or, I mean, kids are going to do. I think we have to think about education. And I think we have to really stop hiding from our um, young girls the reality of what can happen. Yeah. You know, I think there was a movie that came out a few years ago. It was called The Hunting Ground. Oh. And it talked about uh, sexual assaults in colleges. And it doesn't happen to everybody. It, It didn't happen to me. I went to school for four years, but it does happen. And I think that we need to educate our young girls before they go that this can happen. And these are how the ways that you kind of prevent on that, which is, uh, that's some of one of the things I want to talk about today is people think abduction is one thing, but abduction is actually the act of taking someone away by force or deception from one place to another. So I call them crime scene one and crime scene two. And you never really want to go to crime scene two because crime scene two is where they're comfortable. They know that no one's going to hear you scream. You know, you don't want to go to crime crime scene two. You want to do anything you can to keep in crime scene one. Yeah, that's something I um I did know. I the way it was put to me when I learned it was point B. Never go to point B. You know, they yeah. they try and abduct you at point A. If you get to point B, your chances of survival or rescue are basically cut in half or worse. I, yeah, I think it's probably like 20%. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our, and I might be being generous. I don't know what the statistics on that are, but um, I tell people, scream, holler, yell, say, not my husband, stranger, I don't know you. And use that voice that's commanding so people will look. And I say, it, you know, if nothing else, she'll be on YouTube. Somebody will film it. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, if you're bringing attention to them, they're like, okay, I, that's not what they want. They want you to not be bringing attention to them. Right. You know, if you see something happening and you think that doesn't look right, just say, hey, what are you doing? You know, like I'm, I'm not encouraging you to get into the, a situation where then you become a victim, but maybe running in and telling a manager or telling the security guard, I saw this in the parking lot. I, you know, being aware of your surroundings. I just heard a, a story the other day where a lady was in a store, a major store, and they put on shirts that made them look like security for that store. Two men did, and they approached her and said something like, we saw you steal something or something. They accused her of something. And they tried to grab her and tried to lead her to the back of the store. Wow. And she was like, I'm not going back there with you because I didn't do that. And I don't think you're really security. So hmm. I think those kind of things like being aware and just picking up on your intuition. Because your yeah. intuition is so strong that we taught. I, I think we've kind of taken that away from our young girls too about using their intuition, no yeah. matter who it's about. I always teach it doesn't matter if it's your your mother's best friend. If you feel uncomfortable, tell your parent. Yeah. Tell your trusted adult. If they don't believe you, tell your grandmother, tell your aunt, you know, tell me, <laughs> you know, um, just tell your trusted adult. Because this statistic is one that I, it made me sick to my stomach today when I read it. But every year, 8 million, 8 million children are reported missing worldwide. Wow. I'm like, I think there's 7.2 million people in Dallas. So it's like the whole of Dallas just disappeared in children. Wow. That's... In the United States, 2,300 children are reported missing per day. Now, is that, are those some of those runaways or are, the, are these abductions or are they just the reported missing? 
They're the reported. So a lot of them, they say that parents are accountable for over 90% of abductions. Yeah. And I just want to point out that some parents are abducting their children to get them out of a, of a situation that is not, not good. Right. But we, and I don't know how to solve that problem. I'll be honest with you. Um, but there are parents that do abduct their children because they need to be adopted, that there are someone, I know a young man who, why her ex took their children and he has not seen them in three years. Wow. It breaks my heart. Every time I think about it, my heart hurts because I know his heart is hurting for those children, but he had custody. Okay. So, you know, it's one of those kind of situations. So that is 90%. So stranger abducts less than 1% of missing children. That part made me feel better. Right. But do I, should I really feel better? You know, I don't know. Should we feel better about that? I don't know. Um, one of the things I teach kids is if you're being a, approached or wanting, somebody's wanting to take you is to put your arms around their leg and sit down on their foot. You know how we used to do that when you were little and then yeah. it's hard for your parent to walk? Yeah. So I was telling somebody the other day, if you're a teenager or, a, or an adult and the situation is the same, they're trying to take you, do the same thing. Because yeah. think about it. If that man, if you have your arm around him as an adult or a teenage girl and he's trying, he, there's no way he can walk with you. Now yeah. you can scream, you can scream louder. You can say, this is a stranger. I don't know this person, you know, get away from me. But they're not dragging you because they can't even pick up their foot if you think about it. Yeah. You know, if you sit down on your foot and they're trying to take you away. That's a great tip. Yeah. The other one is to go back with a family word. So we've quit having family words, the safe word. Oh, our family has a safe word. We always did too, but my well, dad was. It's a phrase. Like I'll, I'll say the first part of the phrase. I'll, I'll, I'll uh -huh. send a text and then my daughter's got 15 minutes to reply with the correct, the, the correct phrase back. And then we know things are good. Um, oh, I love that. We also I have a signal if either my husband or I get a text of just an X. Um, oh. And we all, the three of us share locations as a family. We have a family group chat and in that chat, we, we share our location. So even if I were to send an ex or my husband were to send an ex, you mm -hmm. know, we know where you are and you're in trouble and we're going to be on our way and on the phone with 911, you know. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. One of the things I've been telling people too is because uh, Damsel has a, we have a, an app you can download onto your phone. It's totally free. It's called Shield Technology, Shield Community by Damsel in Defense. Now we also have an alarm that you can marry to that, or you can also do a pepper spray, but it has in it, if you open it, you can send a text. You just hit a button to your five superheroes that you're in trouble and GPS your location. What I've been telling people to do is to put it on their kids' phones, especially because if, God forbid, there is an incident at the school, oh, your gosh. kids can open it up and they can send a mess, like hit the button to send a message that they're in trouble. And then if they're safe, they know that you know because it's been going on for a while or whatever. They can hit, I'm safe now. And it will send a message that says I'm safe. Now, when they do that, it will turn off the GPS. They will no longer get updates. But as long as they're within 300 feet of their phone, it's going to give an update. So that's a great way for, and the alarm that you can marry to it has a silent alarm on it, it has a button that you can push and there will be no sound so that you could keep hidden but then that person, and then you can text or whatever if you need to, but at least somebody would be on the way. I tell teachers to download it. 
Yeah. Because if they're in trouble and they, they send that out during the day, their superheroes know to call the police right away and say, I got this from my, my daughter. She's a teacher at blah, 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 you know, or whatever. But it's a great way to get information out there quickly that something's happening. Right. So I love the alarm. I love the pepper spray, but I love the alarm because of the silent way that I could get a hold of somebody. Yeah. So especially something like that, because so if you're in trouble, it's going to go to like five different people that you choose. Yeah. So they're all going to get it because what if like my husband, if he's mowing the lawn, he's not going to have his phone with him. But my aunt's going to have her phone with her. Right. So, you know, you want to put those people in it that will have their phone with them. So um, the other thing that I thought was really interesting that um, we never thought, I never thought about telling parents is know the route your child takes to and from school, where their friends' houses are. If they're on the way to and from school, do they stop at their friends' houses? Who lives along the route of that? So if something were to happen and they needed somebody, they know somebody halfway down the street or something. They know that person. My dad was a Marine, so he always told me to look for the Marine Corps flags and just knock on the door and say, Semper Fi, I'm a Marine Corps family, and they'll help you. Um, I'm sure other militaries do it, but we were a Marine Corps family. So that's what he told me to look for. But on the route, if work with your child, walk that route and say, okay, if something scary was to happen, where would you go? Right. Where's the house that you could go to that would be safe? You know, what would you do? And kids are resilient and sometimes you can make it like a, a fun game. So see if you can get away away from me or something. So you don't have to make it scary. It doesn't have to be something frightful that you're terrorizing your child with, but it could be something that could save their life. I mean, I remember seeing a video where a girl was being followed and she knew to get on the other side of these cars that were parked. And so when the car would go up, she would go back the other way. Like she kept the cars in between her and the car. And the house that she was in front of had a ring doorbell. So it was all caught on tape. Wow. Video. So she was super smart about it. Yeah. You know, so I think doing those kind of little things. The other thing people think they're going to scare their kids, but what you're really doing is an empowering now. You're saying you are smart. You can protect yourself. You know, I think what uh, sometimes we get complacent about, oh, well, mommy and daddy will always protect you. But we need them to learn that they can protect themselves, that they are not powerless. We need to yeah. empower our young children. So um, the other thing is to be, we teach our, our, our young girls and boys to be polite, but sometimes it's better to be safe than polite. Yes. You know? Yes. I'm a big so, fan of, of that theory. You know, I'm like, it, it, you don't have to be hateful and rude until you have to be hateful and rude. Right. And then it's totally okay. You know, I tell people all the time, it's okay to be judgmental if your intuition's telling you to be judgmental. Right. You know, we want to think the best of everybody, but listen to those inside voices, you know, so, and to never open the door to strangers, um, you can... You can always talk through a door while you're texting your mom and saying somebody's at the door. This is what they say they are. Because I went to the Citizens Police Academy and I used to not answer the door because I used to lived on a corner and I would get solicitors a lot. And they taught me, Nancy, if they don't get an answer, a lot of times they'll just jump the fence or get in the back way because usually you can go back through the back door. So I would answer the door or I would say, I have pepper spray. How can I help you? If I didn't know the person. Yeah. And then I, I actually did sell a lot of pepper spray that way. But the whole point is a lot of times the people would back up and go, I just wanted to talk to you about a roof. And I said, well, I'm not interested in the roof. And I would have my pepper spray where they could see it. Yeah. And it really helped, I think. And then one time I was next to the guy who had come to my house the week before and he was telling me the story. And I was like, that was me. <laughs> he was like, oh my God, it was you. You know, he didn't recognize me at first. But he was talking about how scary that was for him because 
he, that was his job was to go door to door. Yeah. You know, well, and I, was I like, mean, well, think, it, think about it. You know what? BTK installed house alarms. You know, I don't let any, nobody comes in this house without my husband home. That's just a rule. There's very few exceptions. Our bug guy has been our bug guy for 15 years. He's allowed to come in and spray. Yeah, you know here. what I mean? Our but, pool guy. Yeah. Yeah. I've had situations where, where somebody was going to come over and, and drop and buy something or, you know, online yard sale, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, I'm very fortunate. I have family literally around the corner. So I was able to call a male to come over and, and I just say, Hey, you know, I'm having a stranger come over. Can you come over here for 15 minutes and just hang out? And yeah. that's worked out. But yeah, that's one of the rules in our house, especially with our daughter is nobody comes in this house and she has a list yeah. of approved people that can come in the house if we're not home. Yeah. I think, see, you just said some magic words. She has a list of approved people. Yeah. You know? But the other thing is I want, I want women to know too, you don't always need a man to be there, but a lot of times men will be a deterrent. Yes. So, but I'm going to tell you, my husband probably wasn't as big a deterrent as me telling everybody I had pepper spray and holding it in my hand correctly and holding it up where they could see it. Well, you know, now you're they, making me want to get a can of pepper spray and hang it on the little coat rack we have right <laughs> next to our front door. <laughs> That's where mine is. It's right next to the front door so yeah. that, you know, because I don't know if you ever heard my story, but somebody tried to pick me up when we first moved to Texas. Yeah. Uh, and you, right you in the front barbecue. of my house. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, right in front of my house. And I had the pepper spray that has the GPS location in it. But, you know, a lot of times it's just. I am looking at you. I see you. I know what's going on. You're not taking me. If you look like you're going to be a trouble, a lot of times that's enough for them to go, okay, she's going to be too much trouble. You know? Yeah. I don't know how many times I, and I've said this before. I don't know how many times I scream at the podcast. Did no one, does she not have a pepper spray? Does she not have a stun gun? Not that that's a deterrent that you're, or a gun, you know, whatever, but not that you wouldn't be taken, but nothing to fight back with you yeah. know no one these people are having something to fight back with i feel like in this day and age and, it, and it's not just women we're we're mostly talking about women but it's not just women i think everybody needs to have some measures of protection with them i mean yes it's scared. If I actually let it enter my brain, all the horrifying. I mean, every day there's, I get a notification, mass shooting here. When, uh, mom, a uh, mom of three abducted, found in yeah. the woods. You know, it's, it's just like a constant. This stuff is happening everywhere, every single day. And it's terrifying when you actually allow yourself to think about it and, I just, I, and I've told this to friends, family. I just think everybody should have a case in point. Here we go. My sister and I went on a trip together. We went down to the hotel restaurant. We had a few drinks. We had dinner. She wanted to go back up to the room for something. She forgot her key. She came back down. Instead of coming to find me at the restaurant, she went to the front desk, asked for a key. The security guard irked her. Something about him made her feel weird. She didn't like it. He offered to walk her back up to the room and, and, and let her in. And she said, no, I just need the key. The front desk gave her the key. The security guard still followed her up and, and she got into the room. She stayed in the room and, and I, I think she said she looked out the peephole until he went away. Then she came back down. And she was so freaked out. And so. I had to go to my car and get my concealed weapon. I have a permit. And she was so freaked out about it that she wanted me to go into the room first and clear it because. Oh my gosh. Was, and this was a security guard at a hotel, a very nice, a Marriott, a very nice upscale hotel. And, um, 
She was so freaked out about something about that interaction and her intuition told her something's not right with this guy and and she doesn't carry and she doesn't carry anything really. She's I hope she doesn't listen to this, but I mean she's kinda <laughs> like la da 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 and and she gets on to me because she's not comfortable around guns and things like that. And yeah. I, and I, I kind of, so that must've really scared her Lauren for her to want you to get forget, you know, like, but she listened to her intuition and yeah. that, and I know you, and you probably really praised her for, for listening to her, her, her intuition. And that's what we need to do. Ladies and men, we need to listen to what our inside voice is telling us. And that's, you know, and I was able to give wrong. her a little lecture too. say, oh, well, you, you say you don't like guns. You say you don't like any of that. Well, you don't need a gun. Get a stun gun. Yeah. Get pepper spray. Yeah. You don't, you never know. And she travels a lot for work. I was just accompanying her on a work trip because she, you know, sometimes I'm bored yeah. and I want to go somewhere else. And, and I mean, it was a work thing. That's why she was there. And, yeah. and she does travel a lot for work. So. Um, well, I'm really excited that Damsel came out with a new, a couple of new products and one of them is called a lockdown. And so we just went to Cabo. I just earned our incentive trips and we went to Cabo and I took it and it goes into the door and then you shut the door and it has a little piece that drops down and now it secures the doors in a hotel so room. They can't in a hotel room. I use it on my front door. My, um, uh, there's claw if your claw it uh, will work on any door that opens in okay but it gives you but it's very portable you can go through i i had it in my purse no mm -hmm. one ever saying i mean like you know it's very portable they're very inexpensive but they're a great way to have that extra lock on the door especially if you live in an apartment or when i travel i like to stay in airbnbs because I'm mm -hmm. nosy and I like to see people's homes um, <laughs> and, and I'm cheap and they're usually cheaper, but I always take the lockdown now too. And then we have one that's called the step off and you can put it on glass. It'll suck to a glass. So like a sliding door or like a balcony. We had a balcony too. In, okay. In Cabo, so I did, I did both. And then the third piece in travel is now we have a hairbrush and I'm going to tell you, this is totally off the subject, but I love a good round hairbrush. Oh, me too. And I could not find one. So Damsel came out with one and I took it to the hairdresser and I was like, look at this. I love this brush. And I said, I'm not getting the static like I used to. And she said, Nancy, when you blow dry your hair and you get static, this <laughs> that's because you have metal in that brush. And that's what's causing the static. Well, I didn't know that. So that's just an uh, you know, public service announcement. But anyway, <laughs> so I love this brush and it makes my hair look full. It's beautiful, but the end of it comes off. So you can stick like money and stuff down there in it. Mm -hmm. So I took it with us again and I, I was going to kind of see what's going to happen. I left a little bit of my hair in the brush because you know how people are weird. Yeah. And I put $20 in the brush and I just left it out while we were at the pool, whatever. I mean, anyone could come by and picked it up. Not one person even looked at it because it was my brush. I got through TSA with it. I had my money stuck down in it, but I'm also a waitress three days a week. So I put my, I put it in my, my little backpack. I'm going back out to my car and I just leave like 40 bucks in my, my wallet. I mean, my pocket. So if I, something does happen and I just want to throw my money at them, I'm not giving them all my money because it's all in that hairbrush. That's smart. Well, That's neat. Three those new. are the three pe three of the new pieces that we're going to have at Crime Con. Everybody yes. stops at our booth and then you can go over to Lauren's booth and go, look what I got. And you know so, what? You'll know it's Nancy's booth when you start hearing the... Uh, when the, you heard, the crack start hearing this. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> we were last Crime Con in Las Vegas. We were... Like right around the corner from you, and all day I'm hearing that that crackle all day, and I'm like, "There's Nancy over there. She's she's must be killing it, man. She's she's crackling every, all over the place." Yeah. Well, I love Crime Con because uh, people who listen to crime, true crime podcasts, understand the need for protection. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, my tagline is don't be the subject of your favorite podcast. Don't make Lauren and I come back and talk about you or Lauren <laughs> and Ken. We need you helping us finding the people and s- help solving the problems that are already out there. We don't need any more. You know, there's so many uh, things that, that you guys could cover more than what you could cover in six years, you know, yeah. that need help solving. So we need your intelligence. We don't need you to be the part, the right. subject. Of the, right. Of the, uh, I did want to point out really quickly, though, that abductions, um, well, rapes happen one in five women and one in 71 men. Now, that's a statistic I have not had before is the men statistic uh, because men think that they can't be raped. But let's remember, you guys, rape is not about mentally wanting to be there. Your body's going to respond because of the stimulus for men. It's not about who is doing it. So a lot of men don't don't report because they're embarrassed it's happening to them. So I want to give those men a shout out who did report and say, congratulations. Thank you for coming forward because we do need to understand the numbers are still way off. It's still one in five women, but one in every 71 men. Um, that's scary to me too. Yeah. You know, so you can be raped by a man or a woman. And yeah. So I want us to not be complacent and always, I think men sometimes get a bad rap because we always go he, 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 but it's not always a man who's going to abduct you. It's not always going to be, you know, I just heard from the police here where I live that when you go up to the ATM, I put my car in park. Well, I have a fob and it automatically unlocks the doors getting ready for me to get out of the car. Well, what's happening is when you're doing that, now they're having people come and get opening the door and getting in, getting in the car with you. And that's how they're robbing you at an ATM. So now the moment I put it in park, I block them back. So yeah. make sure you're doing that. You want to go to the ATM in the middle if you can, because then it's harder to get your doors open. Yeah. Instead of the one on the end. I mean, I always like to go to the very end one because it seems to be faster, but not anymore that I've noticed this. And I'm so grateful for that policeman for telling me that because I had no idea that that was even happening. And I didn't even think about my fob unlocking the doors automatically when I put it into park. Yeah. My car does the same thing. And I actually hadn't thought of that. So I'm glad that you said that because now in the future, I will think of that. Yeah. So make sure that you're going, you know, to the middle ATM or yeah. so that, you know, now the back door, sometimes they can still get in from the middle one. But if you've locked the doors correctly and then absolutely at gas stations too it's happening so a lot of times we get out to get gas we're not thinking about it we're not locking our doors so make sure you're locking your door and then get your gas yeah Um, you know especially with your fobs because they automatically unlock your doors you know so just lock your door again that's just a way to be safe too and because you don't want them getting in your car now if they do get in your car one of the things that that i've been told is and you, they're taking you to a second crime scene, okay? And there's nothing you can do. Have a wreck. You've got insurance. Yeah. You know, if you have a wreck, more than likely, they're probably going to get out of the car and run. If they don't, you know, they're still, they're going to have to deal with all that. But, you know, your insurance on your car would probably help you <laughs> yeah. in that situation. But yeah. don't just drive to the next crime scene and think you're going to talk your way out of it because you're not. Yeah. I did want to, this, this freaked me out. This was, uh, 2021, 184,068 adults were reported missing in the United States. 184,000. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that correct? That's a lot of people. Yeah. And then the cases involving violence are more common in older ages than younger ones. Huh. That's that that's a surprising. That's surprising. That is because the average age of uh, 83% of rapes happen to people but in the age range of 12 to 34. But I think when people are missing, 
the cases involving violence are more common in older ages. That could be because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately where the old people have been killed so they could get their life insurance or whatever. So don't tell anybody, let it be a gift that they're getting life insurance and they get surprised at the end. Don't tell anybody you have life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I also thought this was really kind of scary. The perpetrator is typically someone they know or has interacted with or a former domestic relationship or stalker. Mm, yeah. Now I thought that was really, so I think it's really important for us to realize, you know, who we've come in contact with, how are they acting? We had a guy that came into the restaurant and he was there all day. He just was hanging out. And about two hours into it, I went to my manager and I said, this is not, something's not right. You know, I said, this man is, we were about to get off work. And I said, I need you to come and walk us all to our cars. I know they're right out front. It's daytime. Something's not right with this guy. And so he did because he knows that I, what I do. And so he respects me. But so he did that. The guy came back the next day and kind of started hanging out again. And he said, I think he's been here long enough. So he, that he was actually banned and we haven't seen him since. But I told everybody, they were like, Nancy, do you really think? I said, yes, there's something wrong. Why is he hanging out here? Yeah. You know, he's not eating. You know, and at one point he went across the parking lot, got food from the other restaurant and brought it over to what? eat in our restaurant. And I was like, that's it. That's it. And that's yeah. when my manager was like, okay. We, this has gone on long enough. So we, you need to pay attention to that kind of stuff. It, if it starts to make you feel uncomfortable, uh, really tell somebody, especially if you're at work yeah, and you work in a situation where you're going to get off at night, mm -hmm. make sure you're not on your phone. A lot of women want to tell me, oh, I, I want my daughter to talk to me from the t when she, until she gets in the car. I tell them, no, you don't, because you're never, if something happens, you're never going to sever that tie with your daughter to hang up to call the police. Yeah. You know, so, and most of us only have cell phones now. Yep. Your daughter needs to be looking around, seeing what's going on and, it, you know, paying attention. And if she feels uncomfortable, just go right back into job and call the security or call somebody to come and help you you know there are there is safety in numbers a lot of times um sometimes not but a lot of times if there's more than one it's it's not as easy to grab you so you want to make sure you're walking out with a friend and i know in malls a lot of times they want you to park as far away from the doors that you can so that your customers can park closer right i am not of that mindset I'm you park under the closest light. Yeah. Um, and then talk about security and safety about when you leave. Well, you know, so. you know, and it's not even just at night. The um, uh -uh. if you remember back, uh, I know it was along 2007 in Kansas, the Kelsey Smith, I believe she was 18, oh. 17, 18. And they actually had footage broad daylight mm -hmm. this guy hid between two cars and he just like a like a rocket shot out between these other two cars grabbed her pushed her into her own car and took off with her and they found her a couple days later she had been sexually assaulted and murdered yeah and, and I think we need to remember that. that. The middle of the day. The day. In yeah. a very crowded Target parking lot. I mean, I don't know if yeah. Target is as popular in Texas as Florida, but I mean, Target is where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's we at We have Target. Targets and Walmarts. Yeah. And Dollar Generals. Those yes. are all super, super popular where we are. Uh, but you know what? You're exactly right, because the number one time when people are abducted or assaulted is the grocery store parking lot. And the number one time is between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. And people say, well, why 10 to 12? And I tell them, who goes to the store at 10 to 12? Who do you see in the store? They you see moms. young mothers. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Young mothers and older with older people. Yeah. That's that the makes- majority of the people who go to the store at that point in time. And so those are people who, if you have your kid with you, you're paying attention to your kid. You're, if your kid's upset, how many times have we seen a kid scream and yell and holler and the parents are just like, oh my God, just get in the car. You're embarrassing me. Do we really even know that person's their parent? You know, so that's why I think it's really important that we tell kids to scream stranger. Yeah. I don't know you, you know, not, not help or fire because. People don't respond to that. Plus, if they think it's domestic, they're not going to respond. They're not going to help you as much if they think it's a domestic situation, a a wife and boyfriend. I mean, a wife and husband or a a boyfriend and girlfriend or mother and father. They're not going to help as much as if they think it's a stranger. Yeah. So uh, really quickly, I want to go over one one last thing that I did not ever think about. And this one kind of scared me because how many times have we done this? There is abductions that happen when you're at home. So what they do is they take a package and in the, the scene that I was looking at, the home was gorgeous, but it had those columns out in the front of their home. Yeah. Okay. So the man put a, a package at the end of the stairs instead of next to the door. He, they have, it was a porch and it had three steps down and he put it right at the end of the stairs. And so he was hiding behind one of the pillars. And he rang the doorbell and the lady looked out and saw the package. So when she came out to get the package, he grabbed her. Oh my gosh. So what we want to do is if you're, if you're ordering from Amazon, Amazon gives you a thousand and a half notices on yes. one package on when it's yeah. coming. <laughs> yes, they you know? do. Um, you can, you can watch that. You can see a picture of where they left it. Uh, you know, any of those like FedEx, you can get in on their tracking thing and they'll send you a message of when it's going to be sent and what time. Right. So you want to look at those. If you're not expecting a package, more than likely you're not getting one. Right. Why would you be getting a package that you're not expecting? Right. So if you are sending someone something and you want to surprise them, you may want to call them and say, I'm sending you a surprise. So that they know something's coming. But, you know, even if you are expecting something, though, I do want you to be careful and safe. Don't walk out, you know, until you see the driver get into the car and drive away or something. Be Now they have a lot of drivers that drive their own cars or they drive cars that aren't marked. Right. Yeah. And they deliver. So we need to be careful of that. Well, and I just want to say, because I live in sort of a rural area and we get a lot of those um, people that are in their own vehicle or in a, an unmarked vehicle that do mm-hmm. deliver packages. And uh, I'll tell you something that's changed. I don't want to say changed our life, but has in, in a way is a ring doorbell. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it just just to be able to see it notify you someone's at your door, you can click on it and immediately see a live footage of your door. And you can see this person drop a package, get back in their vehicle, go back down the driveway and then go out and get your package. Yeah. You know, just, I like those. And and we sell those actually in our Pomahawk Media Amazon store, which the link is uh, on our socials and whatnot. Yeah. There are, I'm a big fan of the ring doorbell. There's another one too. There's other of the same thing. I, I don't know which yeah. is better. I'm just saying we have the ring and I love it. So I didn't know that you guys did that. So can you give me the link to your, because I've been looking at a ring. Yes. Because I think that's a brilliant idea. I do have to tell you the story really quick. Yeah. This, tell me. It was one of these, I was looking up stupid criminals and um, this guy goes up to a house. It has a ring doorbell. So of course it, it comes on and it's got it all on film. He grabs the package off the porch and he's walking out to his car, but he has his pants are sagging and he kind of starts to run to his car and he drops the package. And as he drops the package, his pants fall down around his, <laughs> his ankles and he's trying to pick up his pants and trying to pick up the package. Dude, I laughed so hard. Oh my gosh. Like, oh my gosh. But it was all on film, so he got caught. It's Amazon.com slash shop slash Palmahawk Media. That's P-A-L-M-A-H-A-W-K Media. 
Okay. And I, I'll, I will love put, that. I will put that in the show notes along with your links to our special. Do you want to, do you want to tell our listeners about our special, uh, offer? Our special offer for this month from yes, Samsung um, Defense, which I, Give me one second. I got a soapbox. Huge fan of Damsel in Defense. Their products are not only essential for safety, but they are well made. They are, they last, they work. They're not junk like some of these other products you find. Mm -hmm. Big fan. I own a lot of Damsel in Defense merchandise. (laughs) So Nancy's going to give our listeners a, a special offer for this month. Go ahead, Nancy. Yes, I am. Well, I, I'm i so in love with Lauren and Kent. I just love everything you guys do. And you do such wonderful work. And you are your heart is in this for the right reasons. And you just started a nonprofit. Yes, I did. And I'm very proud of you. Thank you. And you are going to be helping so many people. And I wanted to be a part of it now. So I have developed a shopping link just for your listeners. And when they go on in the whole month of May, so from now until the end of May, so when they're buying their Mother's Day gifts, their graduation gifts, just their stuff for themselves, and they go on to the link that will post, then I am going to take a part of the profits and give back to your nonprofit so that we can help pay it forward. Not only are we going to get people in our communities across the United States, our true crime communities, safe and protected, but a portion of the profits will go back to you, which I'll let you talk about your charity, but the other, uh, another portion of the profits go back to the damsel houses. And the damsel houses, we've saved 1,500 children from sex trafficking in the last six years. Wow. And we all... Yeah, I'm really proud of that. We also work with domestic violence homes, uh, uh, wipe every tear, rain. There's a lot of good that we do. Now, this will only work on my website. So please follow the link that Lauren is going to share. But Lauren, can you tell us a little bit about the project and maybe some of the projects that are coming up that you need funding for? Yes. Well, uh, a lot of our listeners already know if they've been listening to the show that Ken and I started a nonprofit. It's called the Florida Themis Project. And what we are doing is helping families of missing people, uh, families of crime victims and cold case victims. Kind of, there's no real set parameters of what we will and won't do. But so far, we've helped with a couple of awareness campaigns for missing people. Uh, one, we have had flyers made for a family for missing people. We hopefully are building funds. We'd love to start helping in a bigger way with, uh, maybe if a family wants, needs DNA testing and, and the county can't afford it, maybe we can, we can step in and mm-hmm. donate some that money toward that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's really just we want to help in any way we can, especially to support families and victims. And if the victim is unfortunately already gone, we want to help their family and we want to help justice. We want to find we want to help get justice for their family and closure. So that's the main that's the major goal of the uh, Florida Themis Project. We've got a group of about eight of us, a great board of directors. We're off to a really good start. But like I said, we're very new. We're we're fundraising. We're in a big fundraising push right now. So <laughs> but we're still helping people. And even a lot of like I said, an awareness campaign, we did a we did a podcast episode and then we blast on social media and we and you know, we do everything we can to keep these cases in the spotlight and Make sure that they're not forgotten, even cold cases, you know, we're, we're yeah. definitely open to taking on anything that we can help with. We will. I love that because I think that shows the true heart of you and Kim, because I know your heart's wonderful. Now everybody else does. And <laughs> I want everybody to be able to stop by CrimeCon, stop by my booth 
because um, I have I haven't talked to Lauren about it yet, but I have some ideas on what we can do at CrimeCon too to bring some attention to the project and to maybe do some fundraising or or maybe I'll have a special on something that we can you know I'm gonna, I'm going to plan something so because oh. I'm really I love this. And I love the fact that you're really supporting those people out there. And just thank all the missing people. That's what we're talking about. How many were abducted? Right. They didn't yeah. just go missing, you know. So yeah. well, thank and, you so much, yeah. Nancy. <laughs> you're, oh, you're, you're welcome. You're too sweet. <laughs> you're welcome. It's important. You know, we are here to help each other. Yeah. That's what we're on earth to do. And that's what we need to do. Yes. So. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me and uh, ta- having this conversation. I'm, I think that our listeners are going to get a lot from this. Just, just listening to us chat about it. I've, I've learned quite a bit and I thought yeah. I knew everything already. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a, a, uh, if anybody is interested, they can get some friends together. We can do a zoom. We can talk about it with their friends. We can bring awareness this way. So, um, I just, if, or if they just want to talk to somebody about it, tell them to hit me up. I'm on all social medias as Damsel Ninja Nancy. Yes. And I'll definitely be putting the link to, uh, your website and the link to your socials and your contact info in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And then I'll also be sharing it on social media as well. So everybody can keep an eye out and, um, yeah, hopefully we, we can help a few people. (laughs) Yes, that's what that's what the goal is, is to help yes. you find that starfish and help them. That's right. So All don't right. be the subject of your favorite podcast. That's right. Be part of the solution. I like that. Don't be the subject of your favorite podcast. I might actually use that. Go ahead. Um, I use it all the time at Crime Talk. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me to share with all of your viewers. And thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, everything. You're amazing too, Nancy. You know that. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. That is it for tonight. If you'd like to support our show, go ahead and subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com backslash Palmahawk Media. That's P-A-L-M-A-H-A-W-K Media. Check out our website for links to all of our social medias, Patreon, merch store, Amazon store, yada, yada, yada. And please make sure to subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening and rate and review. This really helps us branch out and reach a wider audience. And thank you for listening to Paradise After Dark.